Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna try to continue our mission to create tutorials for all of the challenges found at the tier two level at twotalltoby.com. So if we go to twotalltoby.com, we can click access full library. Here we can see we've got a library of over 250 2D to 3D CAD challenges, and there's quite a few in here. It can be a little daunting, this library, but fortunately you can filter your challenges based on the type of model or based on the difficulty level. So we're gonna go to tier two here and we can see we've done tutorials for almost every model in here, but down at the bottom, we've got a straggler. So 250307, let's click here to practice and let's get into this thing. We can see 135 people have solved this and the average solve time is five minutes. 54 seconds we're gonna try and beat that average solve time today so we're gonna say click here to begin and go so the question here is what is the mass of this part in xxx pounds oh we got a model in inches and pounds today that's cool looks like this thing is made of red oak kind of a unique material 570 kilograms per cubic meter and doing this in inches now even though the clock is running down here i always like to start out by coming up with a game plan and in this model i think this shape here really jumps out at me as kind of the starting shape this t shape can't imagine why that letter t would mean so much to me but i think that what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the origin right here and the reason i'm doing that is because this model has symmetry so we're going to take advantage of symmetry in fact i think that our our first uh sketch here actually i think it's going to be here on the front plane we're going to create this t shape here on the front plane it's kind of got a t from two different directions but here from the front plane we're going to create this t shape we're going to put the origin here and i think what we're going to do is create a center line and that way we can just create half of that t shape and mirror it across in fact, using on shape, we can take advantage of the contour, contour functionality and actually kind of include everything together here. We'll probably make this whole sketch and then mirror the whole thing across here so that we have that mirrored version over here on the other side. So I think my first sketch is gonna look like this, everything that we see in red here. And then all we have to do is just extrude those to the different depths and we should be pretty much done with this model. So I know that we took a couple of minutes here to kind of come up with a game plan, but I think it's always good to start out with a game plan and then jump into your 3D CAD. And if you agree, be sure to hit the like button on this video. So I'm gonna say open in a new window, that way I can take the drawing here and move it over to my second monitor. And then I'm gonna to choose to move this over a little bit so we can keep an eye on the clock, so we can keep an eye on the average time. And let's get into it here in on shape. So we'll start out here in on shape. We're gonna say that we want to create a new document. I am gonna put this in the public space. So if you ever get stuck on this model, you can always search the public space for 25-03-07 wood T block. And then the very first thing I'm gonna do is change my units because this is in inches and pounds. So up here, this hamburger menu, we're going to go workspace units. We're going to say we want to work in inches. Let's see here, inches. And then down here for our mass, we want to solve our mass in pounds. And we'll hit the green check mark. And now let's jump right into our game plan. We're going to start out with a new sketch on the front plane. So front plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal to, S key. And I'm going to create one half of that T shape. So I'm going to come over, up, over, up. Sometimes I just kind of loosely sketch the geometry that I want. And maybe I'll create a final line that comes down here. And before I drop this line, I'll press Q. And that changes that line to construction. Now, the reason that's beneficial is because now I can press Escape S key dimension. And I can dimension from this line here to that, that construction line. And I can cross over. See, I can cross over here, and that lets me input the total width, the total mirrored width here, even though I'm just doing half the sketch. So that's going to be three inches. Our total height here, this is all in that front view. Actually, this one's in the right, right side view, 3.5. Uh, we're going to say that the distance here from this line down to this line is going to be 7 slash 8 seven eighths so if you're not sure off the top of your head what seven eighths convert converts to you can just type in seven slash eight and then for this dimension here again i'm going to go to that construction line and i'm going to cross over and that is also going to be seven slash eight that's shown in the front view it's kind of like up here in that front view so now that we've got that geometry cre created, the geometry for the T shape, now we can go in and create a few additional lines and an arc or a circle. So I'm gonna create a line here that comes down to the bottom, gonna get that horizontal to the origin and then comes over here. That should give me nice black, yep, fully constrained geometry. And then I'm gonna create a circle here. And when I go to create this circle, I'm gonna type in a dimension for this circle, five slash eight. So these, these holes are five eighths in diameter. And then I'm gonna add in a dimension here. So S key dimension from the base 
to the center of that circle. Looks like that dimension is going to be 1.5. And then the dimension across the center line is 1 and 7 eighths. So usually the way that I do this in on shape is I just type 1 plus 7 slash 8. I don't know if there's a better way to do it, but that's always worked well for me. 1 plus 7 slash 8. Enter. And you see that makes it 1.875. So sometimes when you're working with fractions, it's good to know some of these shortcuts to kind of get those fractions into decimal on the fly. So that's what your first sketch should look like, something like that. If you want to pause the video for a second and just get that first sketch to look like this. It's a little busy, but it's nothing too crazy. The final thing that I'm going to do with this first sketch is I'm going to mirror it. So I'm going to press escape. I'm currently in the dimension command. I'm going to press escape here. And then I'm going to put a window around everything that's in the sketch, all the lines and that construction line, all the lines, the arc and that construction line. And then on my on shape toolbar, I'm going to look for the sketch mirror command. It's right up here. Click mirror and that should just automatically mirror it. You selected a bunch of solid lines and one construction line, so it should automatically mirror it right across that construction line. And that's it. That's your first sketch. Good job. We got that first sketch done. So now we can choose extrude. We go to extrude here. We can see everything is being extruded. Uh, we don't necessarily want everything, so we can press the space bar. That clears those selections. And this is a solid extrusion new. Press the space bar, it clears those selections. And then we can just click here inside the T region. What's the depth of that going to be? Looks like that depth is going to be 3.5. 3.5 for the depth of that extrusion. Enter, enter. And then we can come over here to the tree and we can show, show that original sketch. Here we go. Show that original sketch. And then what I like to do is pick this region here. And pick this region here. You don't have to hold control or anything. You just click on each of those regions. And then S key extrude. And so on shape automatically picks up on those regions. It knows to use those regions. It's like a pre-selection basically. And then that, that one is going to have a depth of 7 slash 8. And enter and enter. And that's pretty much it for that, that model. We could go over here to the tree. We could hide that sketch. We could rename our features. You know, this would be shift N main layout sketch. Click here, click here, shift N, main T shape. Click here, click here, shift N, back plate with holes. Now we've got a nice defined tree there. Um, you can hide or, you know, hide the sketch if it's still shown. Click on it to hide that sketch. You can hide your planes by pressing the letter P. One thing that I always like to do is I always like to change the color of my parts to kind of match the customer color. So down here where you've got the name of the part, you can say edit appearance. We can change that to kind of more of a wood grainy type color. And then the final thing that we're going to do is right click down here and we're going to say assign material. Now this material is going to come from the Too Tall Toby custom material library. If you're not sure how to set that up, I'll include a link down below in the description. And this material is called Red Oak, 570 kilograms per cubic meter. So that's what's shown on the print. We hit the green check mark. We come down here into the corner and we choose this icon to measure the mass. And then we click anywhere on the part. And it looks like we're coming up with a mass of 0 0.444 pounds. So let's move the app back onto our main screen here and see if we got it right. 0 0.444 and enter. And oh yeah, we get that purple box. We always get so happy when we see that purple box. And so that is how you can take that model, that drawing, and turn that into a fully defined model and calculate the correct mass. So I'm going to choose submit here. And then we'll take a look at our kind of CAD challenge dashboard. So after we choose submit, we can see that the the uh, time that we submitted there was seven minutes and 29 seconds. The average time here is five minutes and 55 seconds. So I might want to go back and do a try again and see if I can do this a little bit faster. That's the cool thing about this app. You could always keep practicing. I always like to try to beat this time here. So I like to do the try again and then practice my workflows and try to get under that average time. But guys, if you like these kinds of challenges, be sure to visit us at TooTallToby.com. We've got a library of over 250 of these 2D to 3D CAD challenges where you can test and practice and refine your CAD skills using any 3D CAD system. And of course, if you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know down below in the comments what you learned. Be sure to hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next OnChain step-by-step -step tutorial.